moron! Duh! <laughs> look, look, look at me! I'm the whoa water boy, duh! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm having a fantastic one. Oh, my goodness. I am so lucky, so blessed to be able to wake up in the morning and to be able to come in here or back at the uh, house in my man cave and talk to you guys about my biggest passion. Well, I don't know if it's my biggest. I'll say my wife is my biggest passion. But one of my biggest passions, which is covering the Dallas Cowboys. And being a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber, there's always so much to talk about. I don't know how other teams YouTubers, with the exception of the Eagles, because let's be honest, they're quite drama-filled as well, um, make it. I, I just don't know. I, you know, in, in talking to Ginger Rogers, who's a Seattle Seahawks fan, who is asking me, and don't forget to email me, Ginger, because I would love to help you get started with your YouTube channel without having drama, without having holdouts and things like that, without having coaches on the hot seat, without having speculation of firing everybody and getting rid of your coach um, and your quarterback and then hiring a former player like Deion Sanders and bringing in his son. I, I, I don't know. How, how do you all do that? How do you do it without having the content? It's easy here for us Cowboy fans. So here we are. We are 16 days, only 16 days away from the sick, the kickoff of the season, although the kickoffs have even changed. I don't know, my, I haven't really addressed the kickoffs in the game. Now, I understand it. I understand completely the reason behind it, okay? Personally, I understand it. My body today is screwed up. Because of things I did in football. Okay? I, I've got literally bursitis right here. It's like a mouse that's up underneath my arm. Okay? And I remember back in college where I had nerve damage where I got hit in the shoulder, special teams, and my arm literally was numb for like three weeks. And I'm literally running, literally running on kickoffs just trying to throw my arm up so that way I could keep on playing. That's the mentality you have when you play football. What kickoffs used to be was Nathaniel. You had the wedge, which would be like offensive linemen or big guys. You'd get about five of those guys that would get together, and basically shoulder to shoulder, and run up the field. And basically, like a street roller, just roll over everything. On the flip side, I am right next to the kicker, five yards back from the line of scrimmage. When the kicker takes off, we start taking off. So by the time he kicks that football, we're at full speed and we are running down the field as fast as we can and running into that wedge. That's flat out. That was my job run into the wedge, and stop them. Thinking about that now, how crazy it is and the collisions that happen and the injuries that would happen from that, it was insane. But now to see where the, the kicker's all off by himself, the returners are back there by themselves, and everybody's right here and learning that, you know, I don't know how you do an onside kick. I don't know how you do a squib kick. It's just different. But I understand it because I'm still paying for things that I did back then to my body and so on. So the Dallas Cowboys, if the Cowboys are going to be successful this year, it is going to be with the talent that they have within that really threads the needle. OK, and then maybe I need to get my wife to come up with something threat cowboys threading the needle. I don't know, because 
it seems like the things that we need to happen are beginning to happen. You know, when we go through the doom and gloom of the Cowboys season and, you know, all of the, the ugliness that was there. We had Micah Parsons at the Super Bowl with C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb talking about he needs to grow up and so on. And um, here he is. He's posting pictures of, of black Spider-Man. Black Spider-Man suit, I should say. And that contract's not done. We think about Jerry Jones and saying all in, and he can't seem to get any of his guys paid that are over, you know, $3 million a year. We had Malik Hooker throwing Micah Parsons under the bus. Now, I don't know how things change when the season gets here. But at the moment, I look at this and I say, Micah Parsons is taking the bull by the horns and is becoming the leader on that team. Every day, he's out there. He was out there yesterday after practice with Osa and Digazua, as well as Mozzie Smith. They're running five-yard sprints. They have to do 20 of them to motivate his teammates and his players. And you see him constantly as the biggest cheerleader on the field. He's definitely a lot bigger than the Cowboys cheerleaders. But being that guy that's there trying to, it just seems, it, it, and if I'm wrong, leave in the comments that you think I'm wrong. But I feel like Micah Parsons has grown since the Malik Hooker situation. And maybe he's took what he said inside and realizes if we're going to win, it's going to be because everybody out here does 5% more. When I say thread the needle, because we're not looking to get studs, ringers, to bring in free agency, we're not looking for the home run hits where the Eagles are talking about trading for another receiver, that the Eagles go out and sign Saquon Barkley. We need our guys that Stephen Jones believes in to turn the narrative around. And thus far, it seems to be happening with um, our guys. When you think about how Overshown is looking, Overshown is like a big free agent signing. He's our guy. Getting Diggs, who looks like he's going to be healthy back, an all-pro cornerback after losing Stephon Gilmore. We'll see what Carl Lawson is like. He's got to be at least as good as Dante Fowler. Maybe he's as good as Dorrance Armstrong. That's replacing a guy right there. Um, Jordan Phillips, that's your new Hankins. But added to that is an improved Mozzie Smith, who seems to have a desire in putting in the work to be really good. So, as we go through here, I don't want to. I don't want to be the hype train. Okay, I don't be want to be the one who gets yelled at because you know I'm, I'm I'm making up stuff that's not there. But this team potentially should be at least as good, but I believe better than last year. Now, what the Cowboys are doing in the front office, I don't know. I don't know. The rumors, of course, out there that, you know, maybe they don't get Dak Prescott done. CeeDee Lamb, I don't know what's going on there. Yesterday, all kinds of speculation. CeeDee Lamb, some people took it as, oh, Spider-Man. I'm going to be, you know, like a mutant here. And I'm ready to go to work against the defenders. Or I took it as I'm tired of playing with you guys on this contract. And I'm going dark. I don't know which it is. But here it is. We're almost 24 hours past that happening. And there's not a sense of urgency. It doesn't seem from the Cowboys. We ain't heard an announcement that he's coming back. And we ain't heard anything else from CeeDee Lamb other than CeeDee Lamb is continuing to put in the work to be the best receiver he can be. So, there's that. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy. When people complain, well, you know, you got three guys who want to get paid, you know, as the highest paid, you know, in, in football. Yeah. It's because they performed. Micah Parsons, 
if he gets nine and a half sacks this year, he'll be the sixth player since they started keeping that sack as a stat with 50 stats, excuse me, 50 sacks in their first four years. Only six players out there. Six players. Now, now understand, there are other people that have done that because they said that Gino Marchetti actually had 11 sacks in one game. I'm just saying. But be that as it may, in the modern era where they actually counted it, and that is Reggie White, Derek Thomas, J.J. Watt, Demarcus Ware, and Dwight Freeney. And that's rare company to be in. If the Cowboys are going to be successful, guys like Carl Larson, Lawson are going to be part of the reason. I love this quote from Carl Lawson. He was asked, okay, about joining the Cowboys, D, that features Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence on the line, but also with the ball hawking secondary. His quote on this is, Russian coverage work together, but first and foremost, stop the run so you can have some fun. Stop the run so you can have some fun. That sounds like another shirt, too. Stop the run so you can have some fun. Yeah. And by that, here's what, what they mean by that. If a team can't run on you, that means they got to pass. If you are a defensive lineman and you know that they're passing the football, it's when you pin your ears back and you just work yourself straight up field and try and get to that quarterback. And that's what you want as a defensive lineman. Things that I definitely love. Um, if the Cowboys are going to be successful, the gamble that they made letting two starting offensive linemen go, and Tyron Smith, the future Hall of Famer, and starting center for three years, Biotish, go, and relying on what they have. I love this clip. Now check, make sure I got the right one here. Boom. The juggernaut, Cooper Beebe, out with his mom, snapping the football. Look. Look at that. Boom. You got to love this. I love mama. Boom. That's a beautiful thing to me. I, I think it's a beautiful thing. They literally said he was snapping the ball to anybody and everybody that he could to get better. And you've seen him who, you know, the first couple of practices, they said it was kind of shaky. And Brock Hoffman, you know, looks like he's going to be the starter. Cooper Beebe's going to be the backup. But you've seen this whole narrative kind of change and evolve. And all of a sudden, beginning of last week, he was the start. You know, they, they had him with starting reps. And, of course, this preseason game. And, bro... This guy, he loves to knock people down. He loves the contact. This could be Travis Frederick reincarnated or Travis Frederick 2.0. And Tyler Guyton, again, another guy who loves the contact and loves throwing people down. The Cowboys may have gotten uh, lightning in a bottle with these two guys. And so for the Cowboys to be successful, we need this offensive line to be even better. So that way we are able to run the ball better and give our quarterback time. So to me, this team is in a good position if the Joneses don't F it up. Now, my question here is, you know, there's still the rumors of Deion Sanders becoming the head coach. And secure Sander becoming the Cowboys quarterback. Deion says, oh, no, I don't want to coach in the pros and this, that, and the other. But, of course, those rumors never seem to die. I look at Mike McCarthy and his press conferences. He doesn't look like a dog with his tail between his legs. He looks like he's excited. He's comfortable. He feels good about what he's doing. Although, I dare say, if the Cowboys make the playoffs again this year and the Joneses end up not bringing him back, he'll be unemployed for like five minutes. There's a lot of teams out there that are looking to say, 
That guy was more successful than any coach since Jimmy Johnson with the Dallas Cowboys, with Jerry Jones literally not doing anything in free agency. We can work with that. And for those out there that think that just, oh, let's just get rid of Dak Prescott. You know, we can just get another guy. Good luck with that. So let's deal with this rumor of Dion coaching the Cowboys. Cowboys, of course, remain as they usually are at the center of the conversation. We've talked a lot about the fruitless contract talks with C.D. Lamb and with Dak Prescott. Even so, Cowboys legend Deion Sanders offered this defense of his old boss and old buddy, Jerry Jones. I love him. First of all, you know Jerry's my man. Mm -hmm. I love Jerry Jones. I think he's one of the greatest owners that would ever live. And a lot of people talk foolishness about Jerry. Have you ever heard one of the players say something crazy about Jerry? So I'm praying that they win. Uh, they, they have the offense, the defense, the coordinator. They have the personnel, especially when they get CD back in camp. Mm -hmm. But I'm just praying for them, man, because I think they have everything to really win that division. So that was from uh, your radio they show everything yesterday, they need to win Harry. The what more can you tell us about your conversation with Dion as it relates to Jerry Jones and the Cowboys? Well, he, you know, Dion thinks very highly of Jerry Jones, and rightfully so. He played for that organization. Um, Jerry treated him well. He treated Jerry well. There's a mutual respect there as well. Uh, they were able to win, you know, at the highest level. When you talk about a Super Bowl and bringing a championship to, to the Dallas Cowboys and their organization, what's also unique about the conversation we was able to have with Dion is that I also asked him, you know, did he – would he ever leave the college game and go coach in the National Football League? And immediately he shut that down instantly. He said, nope, you know, these guys make too much money. He's not going to sit there and beg someone to go play at a high level and do the things that they're supposed to do. And also to follow that up, I remember we did college game day down at Jackson State and someone that really followed Dion closely and Dion gave him extreme access to the program. He echoed the same thing when I was there, there at Jackson State and also when we had him on Freddie and Harry not too long ago as well. So uh, I, I think he's he's comfortable. He's not satisfied where he uh, what's, what's transpired yeah. in Colorado. He wants to win right now. I'm really looking forward to seeing his team now being the Big 12 and how they're going to continue to progress. He has two guys over there, Shador Sanders, his son, and also Travis Hunter, two of the best players in college football. So I want to see what those guys are going to be able to continue to do on this journey, the path that they're on. Uh-oh. Harry. Uh-oh. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Here we go. You know who gets paid a lot of money these she days, She is too? the shit-starting friend players. that you got. The world has changed. That dynamic has changed mm -hmm. a lot since he was at Jackson State, and even in the last year or two. I'm listening to him talking about Jerry Jones. I'm contemplating a world in which his son, Shador Sanders, is going to be one of the top draft picks, one of the top quarterbacks in the upcoming NFL draft. I'm envisioning a season in which Jerry Jones seems relatively satisfied to let Mike McCarthy have a one-and-done situation, to let Dak Prescott have a one-and-done situation. I'm picturing the ultimate marketer, the ultimate salesman, the ultimate drama, which is Jerry Jones, <laughs> and I'm picturing him imagining Dion and Shador Sanders as his coach and quarterback next year. What do you say, Harry Douglas? Man, it's, 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 it's hard to say. I will say this, for the Dallas Cowboys to be able to make that happen, number one, they better have a top five draft pick. And if you're not in that top five, you you're going to have to do everything possible and give up a ton to be able to move up into that slot to draft mm -hmm. Shador. That's how doggone good I think the young man is at the quarterback position. Also, man, I, I, I believe Dion. So we we had this kumbaya yesterday because we're, we're both, we have this old school way of thinking. And, and we both believe, like, not we don't believe in begging someone to do what they're supposed to do. When you look at this program in Colorado, even though it is NIL, it's the do the little things right and the big things will follow. So it's more so of that traditional old school way uh, of, of moving and, and transpiring. And I, I think instilling certain things in these young men as they try to try to become 
uh, grown-ups. That's great. But the reality is, college football isn't that. He can want it to be whatever he wants. But in a world with NIL and transfer portal, you have to beg players to play for you in college every bit as much as you do in the NFL. In fact, you have to beg them to stick around if you say one thing they don't like during the course of a regular season. I'm not questioning Dion's honesty. I'm saying sometimes smart people change their minds when the circumstances change. And I'm saying I, this is not, look, I do, put this on the bottom line, Greeny's not reporting anything, I don't know. What I'm saying is, if we think the Cowboys are looking for a coaching change and looking to make a splash and looking to go a little bit outside the box, I could see stranger things have happened, Kimberly A. Martin, listen, than this. Listen, we live in a world where Aaron Rodgers is a jet. So it doesn't get any stranger than that for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's funny is Harry said all of that, and all Greeny took from that was, oh, Top five, pick, top five pick, that's all the Cowboys need? Oh, so you're saying there's a chance yeah. that they can draft these guys. I mean, in, in our world, that would be fun. That would be great. Uh, uh, Harry spoke to him. If, if, if that's how Dion feels right now, cool. But like you said, things can change. I do think, Jerry, let's say the season doesn't start off the way it should. We expect it to, right? What if they are struggling? What if Jerry Jones says, you know what? I hear Stephen A. talking about me, and I am all in. <laughs> this is how I'm going to show I'm all in. I'm going to clear the deck. I'm going to get rid of this quarterback. I'm going to get rid of this head coach. Well, who is, go who is he going to hire? He had a chance to hire Bill Belichick. Passed on that. Mike Rabel was out there. Dan Quinn was on his staff. Passed on that. Kellen Moore on his staff. Mm. Passed on that. So I wonder, mm. in Greeny's hosting okay. world, is there a sense that this could happen? I don't know. Would it be fun? Would we spend hours talking about it? Deion Sanders, prime time with America's team? Listen. Box office. Number one, I believe everything. I believe what Dion said. I don't think Dion has any <laughs> interest in coaching grown men who make more money than him. <laughs> That's number one. Okay. Okay. Number two. Under under you know under what you're talking about, Dion to the Cowboys, uh -huh. the, the assumption would be that the that the, Col the the Colorado Buffaloes will have a fantastic. I'm talking about playoff type season. They're in the college football playoffs. I don't like know they, that they necessarily need that to happen. Deion Sanders is a is a is a proven commodity. Deion Sanders doesn't have to prove to anyone who he is. He doesn't have to tell anyone who he is. He has 100% name recognition. Everyone will know exactly what they are doing under those circumstances. He took over a program that was really bad two years ago. People love to pile on him yeah. for last season not having so, been as good. So the question begs is, low key, is Deion? Eyeing the Dallas Cowboys is Jerry Jones eyeing Dion and Secure. And just doing lip service with CD, Dak, and Micah. I have no idea. But this is where that major league reference comes in. I guess there's nothing left to do but win the whole fucking thing. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Peace out.